Henry, so uh, your leader is a large wildcat. Um, what's his name? Muck Bob. Muck Bob, okay. Um, your second is a warrior um, hedgehog. And what's her name? Muck Sheila. Muck Sheila, okay. So just to go through the armour, actually, we'll do that as well. So the wildcat um, has a lucky charm and is armed with an axe and a shield. Um, as standard, because she's a large wild cat, she comes with strong two, which will give her plus two to any damage she dishes out, and tough one, which will remove damage. Um, she's also a natural hunter, and uh, she's fearsome, and a skill upgrade as the leader is furious charge. Um, Mcsheela, the hedgehog, uh, she's armed with a shield and hand weapon. And she has the one use only killing blow um, skill upgrade. So uh, we're on to the weasel next. Uh, so what's the weasel called, Henry? McPaddy. McPaddy, okay. And he is armed with a double handed weapon only. And then we've got a Scottish Terrier. And uh, what's he armed? Uh, well, he's got a double handed weapon as well. So what's his name? Muck Scott. Muck Scott, okay. And then we have got another double-handed uh, claymore wielding red squirrel, and what's his name? McMurphy. McMurphy, and then we have the snake. So this is an adder, and uh, what's uh, what's the adder called for this one? Muck Anna. Muck Anna. Muck Anna the adder. Okay. Um, now um, she has two spell upgrades, so she's going to be weak two and delicate two. Uh, but in return, she's got Cure, which is a target value of 3, uh, range of 12, and will heal D8 plus 2 wounds. But she will need line of sight for that. And then she's also got Lightning Bolt, which is target value of 6, uh, range of 24, line of sight required. And as uh, some extras, she's got two Elf Bolt ingredients which if she decides to use those will increase the damage to d8 plus three. Um, and uh, as she is, uh, or from this college of magic, she will be using fortitude, uh, which is her d8 value. Okay, so that is uh, the clan and they are ready for combat. Okay, so on to Bunty's pirate crew. Okay, so here we have Bunty himself. Okay, uh, he is a otter and he's a large base and he has got a sword and pistol. Uh, he has superior black powder. He also has a lucky charm and a talisman and he has the skill all out attack. Uh, he has swim, which is no benefit for the table we're going to be playing on, uh, but he also is strong one. Uh, next to him, we have his number two, which is Winston, the Cocker Spaniel. Uh, he's armed with two hand weapons or two swords, and he also has a healing potion. And his um, special skill uh, is a focus strike, so he will ignore armor. Um, he has strength two and tough one as standard. Then we come to the, uh, the two Black Rat crew. Uh, so we have Davy Jones with a sword and pistol and uh, he's sort of standard and then we have uh, Barnacle Bob who's armed with a bow and then we're on to our two sh uh, sort of bosuns, our shrews um, so we have uh, Minty uh, who's got sword and throwing knives and uh, Matt Tavish uh, who has got a sword only so very little armour on my side and uh, which is going to probably hurt if I get hit by any of those double handed weapons um, but we do have some long range firepower to compensate for the lack of magician so there we have it there is the pirate warband okay so both six figures so let's uh, crack on and see how we get on okay so to see who gets to go first we're going to do a roll off uh, because our war bands are the same value uh, for the open battle so uh, we're using the fortitude of the leaders so mine is uh, an eight and henry is also an eight and we've rolled eight eight so re-roll a five this time uh, versus a six so henry will be the attacker i will be the defender okay so we've deployed with the pirate force being at one end of the village 
and then at the other end we have the wild crazy northerners okay so uh, Henry has two sorry not two ten fate points for this game which is the standard um, the pirates because they are rogues get an extra two fate points so um, here we go Henry has the uh, first action of the game so uh, who are you going to activate Henry Okay, so the first few actions have been completed. Uh, the large cat has moved up to the uh, wall and hidden behind it. Uh, the hedgehog, only with D6 move, has had to do a double move up to the wall, so it gets the partial cover, uh, but it's not actually hidden. Um, in return, the shrew has done a double move up to the edge of the wall there, and my other shrew has also moved up slightly, but then taken up a hidden position. Okay, so uh, it's, we're being back to Henry's turn. Um, the adder is about to activate. So uh, the adder is going to move. Um, so it's a D6, so up to six inch move. So I'm going to move there. Okay, and she's going to cast a lightning bolt down onto the shrew here. Okay, so let's uh, just do that. Okay, so because the Adam move doesn't get any benefits, um, but minus one for partial line of sight and minus one as the shrew is next to terrain. So uh, target value is eight, uh, sorry, target value is six and fortitude is D8. So uh, needing an eight effectively with a minus two. So let's see. And a two takes you down to a zero. That's a failed attack. So the lightning just sort of crackles around and that's the end of the Adder's activation. Okay, so Bunty has moved up as he's safe from the adder. Um, Winston's moved up to behind the house, and then the three clansmen are literally behind the other side. Uh, so the last thing to do in the turn is for um, the black rat with the bow, he's going to move through the difficult terrain. So because he's moving through difficult terrain, he's uh, d6, um, and he goes one inch, which is not going to benefit me at all. Okay, so uh, he goes one whole inch, which is going to put him there and that's not going to probably be enough to then get a shot off so we'll just measure that Henry if you could do the honours can you just check whether that's 18 inches for me 18. if not I'm going to have to move again uh, oh I am in I am in so I am going to shoot um, so I can see the model but uh, he is within um, one inch of the building and also because there is this fence here because again you may you take line of sight from the model itself so there is cover there as well so I'm going to get another penalty there and I have moved so I'm not going to get many pe many bonuses at all to this roll um, so uh, my range attack is a d6 and I am going to throw one of my fate points in so I get a extra dice okay so, uh, what's the nimbleness of your squirrel, Henry? My squirrel... D8. Okay, so you get a D8. Do you want to put a fate in, or are you fairly confident? Uh, I'll put a fate in. Um, I'd, I'd probably... I think, to be honest, I'm not going to do massive damage, so... I wouldn't spend it if I were you. But it's up to you. Yeah. I'm already at minus two, bear in mind. So I'm D6 minus two, and you're on a D8. Okay. You risking it? Yeah? No. Okay. So, and I'm on the zero. So it's not going to do anything because whatever you do, seven. So you win by seven because the best I've got is two. So the arrow literally probably doesn't even get past that fence. Okay. <laughs> so that's the end of the turn. So that's first turn done. Um, and the only excitement was uh, an arrow fell out of my bow as I fired it. And a lightning bolt managed to, uh, again, totally missed the shrew so that is the end of turn one okay so uh, this time the pirate force uh, won the roll off um, so again every turn you roll off to see who gets the initiative that turn uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, the cock spaniel is going to charge the squirrel and try and put some pain on the squirrel so uh, he's going to do a move and attack action Okay, so as Winston, the uh, Cocker Spaniel, has moved more than two, he gains plus two to his uh, strike value. Uh, I have spent a point of fate to give myself uh, an extra d8, 
Henry has also done an extra fate as well. So he's got um, two D6s versus my two D8s. I'm at plus two because I've moved more than two inches in order to engage in combat. But also um, I've got two uh, one-handed weapons. So I get an extra plus two for having dual wielding. So I am at plus four to this dice roll. Henry is at standard. So let's see what we get. And I've got an eight, which is perfect. So that becomes a 15. Uh, Henry's also rolled a six, so he gets plus seven to that. So here we go then. So work out basically my strike value. So I've got eight plus the four, which is 12, plus seven is 19. So I have a strike value of 19. Uh, we deduct six plus seven, which is 13, okay? which will give us a difference of six. All right, so I've done six wounds against the squirrel. Now, the squirrel has no armor and doesn't have any extra bonuses. No, okay, so he's got nothing that gives him any tough or anything. So just need to double check with the squirrel. Now, the squirrel does have, uh, sorry, not the squirrel, the Cocker Spaniel has strong two. So um, that also gives me an extra two to my damage that I'm going to dish out. So that's six damage through the dice roll with an extra two for strong, eight points of damage to the squirrel. So uh, remember, they only have 16 life points each, so that squirrel is half dead now. Okay, and takes eight points of damage. OK, so we've marked the squirrel and he's taken eight damage, which is two of the incremental damages. So he's now at minus two to all of his dice rolls for the rest of the game. OK, so uh, he's in a bad way, but he's still with a double handed weapon. All right, so uh, Henry's activation. Right, so Henry's decided to activate the adder and he's going to try and cast a spell at Bunty, um, who we can just about see um, down here is within range he hasn't moved this time so he is going to get a bonus of uh plus three uh, but it is also minus two due to partial line of sight and bunty being within an inch of that building so effectively that gives him a plus one modifier uh, it's got a casting value of six and you're rolling a d8 so you need a um yeah, minus one aren't you so you need a seven or eight so he's going to use a fate point to try and increase his chances. So D8s, and you need at least a seven with two of them. So two dice, pick the highest, you need a seven. And gets it, so seven is a success. What damage does the lightning bolt dish out? I think it's D8. So lightning bolt damage yeah. is um, D8. Okay, so you do D8 wounds against me. So one dice, uh, one, so I'll take that every day of the week, uh, because, um, oh he's not tough, so he does take the damage, so uh, Bunty takes a wound, um, and uh, unfortunately for him, he has a talisman, so the first wounds that are taken, he minus his d8 off, so I'm a bit wasteful there on a a roll of a one. So uh, let's see how many wounds I remove. Oh, I wonder. Two. Well, that's a bit of luck because it was a rubbish roll anyway. Um, so effectively, I don't take any damage, but I have just wasted my talisman. So uh, that's now gone. That's burst and uh, saved myself. But there we go. So that's the adder activated and it's back over to uh, the pirates. Right. So the weasels charge around with his double handed weapon to try and hit the dog. So uh, go for it. He's spent fate. Oh no, double eight, so that's a lot. So that's 15 plus two is 17. I've also used a fate point to try and keep him alive and I get a five. Okay, so uh, Winston um, and the squirrel. So the squirrel's got um, an eight, which explodes up to 15, plus two for charging equals 17. Then minus the four, uh, which was the 5 minus 1 for the uh, contact, takes him down to 13. But then the double-handed weapon puts it back up to 16 because it's plus 3 for a double-handed weapon. But the dog fortunately is tough 1, uh, which takes him down to 15 wounds. Um, otherwise it would have been a straight kill, uh, one shot. So at least he's still alive, uh, but he's got one wound left.
Okay, so seeing this, the black rat has decided he needs to try and help the dog. So he's broken cover, marched out into the uh, into the sort of town center and pulled his pistol, and he's going to fire at the uh, weasel and try and take him down. Um, so. Um, First things first, because he's in combat, I have to roll a d6. If I roll a 1 or a 2, I hit the dog instead, instead of the target. So let's see what happens. So I do hit the weasel, or at least I've targeted the weasel. Uh, so it's my ranged value, which is d6, against your nimbleness. What's the nimbleness of the weasel? D8. D8, OK. I am going to spend a fate point, because I really want to try and kill him. OK, so I am going with 2d6. Are you going with a D8? Yeah, I'll go with you. Yep, yeah, okay. Oh, I nearly got the six. So I've got a five versus a three. Okay, so um, let's just double check. So I don't get any bonuses because uh, I did move. I've got clear line of sight, but and he's not in target with an opponent um, with terrain. So um i have a five versus a three so i win by two um so i do two points of damage plus the pistol is um strong one so that's an extra point of damage so that's um, a total of three damage on the weasel and the other thing with black powder weapons is they're not particularly um reliable so if i had rolled a one that would be in me out of ammo or the gun would have been damaged or waterlogged or whatever and not being able to be used for the rest of the game but at least there's a little bit of damage now on that weasel okay so thematically obviously the cocker spaniel didn't realize there were three double-handed weapon dudes hiding behind that building just saw the squirrel and went for it could smell prey and unfortunately is uh, probably like to likely to die so uh, uh, the highland terrier is d8 on strike plus two for charging so let's see what he gets uh, so that's a four, and the dog needs a six desperately and doesn't get it. So it's a three, but it's minus four because of the wounds. So it's a minus one, so that is three difference. So the terrier wins by three, adds an extra three for having the double-handed weapon, taking him up to six. Uh, minus one for the uh, tough of the dog is five damage, and he's only got one left, so the dog is uh, wiped out and uh, dead. Okay, so the pirate Brave Shrew has run across to support the left flank for the pirates and uh, the um, crazy Celtic female warrior hedgehog has decided to try and um, tempt my otter into combat. Um, however, um, my shrew is going to activate and target instead so uh, she is going to or he's going to throw a throwing dagger at the hedgehog okay so we've both spent fate and having worked out the stats the or the modifiers the shrew is plus one range for throwing knives as they're balanced and then plus two because i haven't moved so it gives me plus three, but I'm minus one as uh, the hedgehog is within one inch of a piece of terrain. So I am at plus two to the dice roll, and we've both spent a point of fate. And I get a four, so I've got a total of six. And Henry rolls a six, which is perfect roll, so that takes it up to 13. So um, absolutely no damage. The hedgehog has blocked it with her shield or whatever as she's come uh, running in. Okay. Okay, so the cat has couldn't quite get into combat and has elected to move and uh, get into a better position. Now the otter is going to try and at least take the hedgehog out and is going to try and cut him in half, uh, or her in half, should I say, <laughs> um, at the end of the turn and then hope that I get the initiative next turn in order to finish the hedgehog off or get a first attack on the cat either or okay so the otter is going in to try and uh, take out the uh, brave hedgehog so henry's armed with a shield so he gets plus one he has spent a fate point 
so he's uh, getting two dice, 2d6. Um, the otter has the all-out attack skill, so that allows him to roll his block dice, which in this case is a d10, uh, because he's the leader, he upgraded that. Um, and also his block dice being d6, so I get to add those two together, but I'm also going to spend a fate point, so I'm rolling 2d10 and choosing the best. Okay, so roll. Uh, oh, unlucky. <laughs> Two and a one. Right, okay, so let's see if the hedgehog survives this. And, oh, the best we got on that was a three. So he is going to survive uh, because all I've got is six. Six versus three. So uh, I do three points of damage. I didn't move two inches, so I don't get any more than that. Um, I am strong and I'm armed with a sword, so that's an extra two. So that's only five points of damage. That's a real letdown, uh, but it does at least put the hedgehog into the first wound category. So uh, the hedgehog's now going to be on minus one to dice rolls. Um, and that ends turn two. Right, okay, so uh, Henry unfortunately won the roll off and has activated his large cat. So um, she is going to uh, pounce and attack who by any chance? So she's going to go around the back yeah. of Bunty. So okay. Here. Okay, and uh, there we go. Right, so, um, okie doke. So I've got a block of D6, which isn't good. What you got? Um, on the big <coughs> cat, yeah. I have strike. D12. <laughs> okay. All right, so D12. Um, I've got no chance but to use a fate point, I think. Yeah. Uh, desperately need to do that. Okay, so I'm spending a fate point. You're spending one as well, are you? Mm -hmm. so you all right, okay. So, um, in actual fact as well, you're fearsome, aren't you? So, uh, we need to do a fearsome check and uh, see whether the uh, effects of that so that is i think it's 42 versus presence just double check okay so we need to do a uh, fearsome roll off uh five three so i'm not affected by the uh, fearsomeness otherwise i'd be able to add a minus three i think it is so um so you've got two d12s you're at plus two for charging okay um and i'm on d6s okay go for it A uh, seven is the best, and six. Oh, the otter has survived. So, so we take the seven on the attack, plus two for charging, takes it to nine. Okay, however, 13 on defense means no damage. The otter survives the attack, and he isn't scared of your putty cat. Yeah. Okay, so the otter's going to activate next, uh, purely because um, the otter's aware that the hedgehog has the killing blow special rule, which is just filth. Um, so I need to kill the hedgehog, even though this big cat and the warrior's leader is behind me, I've got no choice really but to try and do that. Uh, so I'm going to spend a fate point as well, and let's see where we get on. So uh, Henry, uh, roll your block dice. Okay, so you've got three, which is the highest. So that would be plus one for the shield, but it's negated by the fact that the hedgehog is wounded. So it's a three, and uh, I get a nine plus one for my skill bonus. This takes me to ten. Um, however, I do get minus one because there's an opponent next to me, so that's nine. Um, so nine versus three, wasn't it? So that's six damage. Uh, but then it's also increased by one for strong and one for the sword. So it's 11 points of damage on the hedgehog. Okay. One, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Dead. So the hedgehog is dead. Yeah. Okay, the adder's coming closer now and has decided to fire into the combat to try and put some uh, damage on the otter. Uh, so d6 roll on a one or a two, unfortunately hits hits her boss. You know, you don't, don't get to use it on that one. So... And hits the cat. 
So now what you can do, you could use a fate point in order to choose the weakest dice. <laughs> but you might not hit anyway. So you've got clear line of sight to the cat, but you have moved. Uh, the cat's not within an inch of terrain, so you need a six on a D8. So a six, seven or eight, and you'll do D8 points of damage against your cat, or you could spend a fate point and choose the weakest. Going for it, D8. And it's a six, which does cast, because uh, there's no negative modifiers. Um, so, yep, that is a hit. So it's D8 damage on the cat. Eight. Now, the cat does have a lucky charm, so it might be worth using your lucky charm, which yeah. allows you to re-roll that dice. <laughs> and a one, that's a bit better. <laughs> okay, so lucky charm is used, and... Uh, just takes the one damage from her own mage. So, uh, yeah, obviously there'll be uh, issues later on, I think, regarding that. Right, OK, so that's the adder done. And back to the pirate crew. And um, I think I'm going to go with my rat with the bow. And he's going to shoot the weasel. Okay, so I'm going to shoot the weasel. Okay, so shooting, I've stood still. So I'm going to go with D6 plus 2. Uh, oh, hello. That's a 6, so that's nice. So that's 13 plus 2, 15. That is minus D8. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, so uh, 15 minus 1. That's 14 points of damage because you've got no armour. And that may have turned the game a little bit in my favour. Having no armour really hurts when you get those exploding or that uh, perfect dice roll. Right, well, I've forgotten. I've actually done some damage against him earlier. I, sh I shot him with a pistol, didn't I? Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's basically, he's dead. He's been shot and uh, now sp skewered with an arrow. So uh, that... That ends the uh, the game for the for the uh, the weasel, and it's now over to um, the the clansmen to decide what they're going to do next. So the terrier has uh, double moved to lock the uh, well semi lock the black rat in combat. Uh, my other black rat has now moved in order to try and shoot the squirrel. So I am at um, minus one because of the proximity of the terrain. Going. Uh, so three versus one, uh, so it's two, um, and plus one for the bullet, um, so it's uh, four damage Take. oh no, actually, hang on, four minus one, wasn't it, so three, so it was two damage plus one, three damage in total. All right, doesn't get on to the next one, um, and now it's your turn. So I made a bit of a mistake there. I got just within six. Um, have to try and remember that you can pre-measure in this game. Uh, so there's a useful lesson for you all. Um, so the squirrel has charged out. Um, he is at minus two because of the amount of wounds he's taken, but he gets plus two for charging. So effectively, it's uh, just no advantage or disadvantage. My black rat is block of D6. And what's your attack? My attack is... So it's their strength. D6, and I'm going to spend a fate point. Yeah, okay. Fate yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to go with D6, and I get a 1. That's not good. <laughs> not good. Yeah. But you've got a 3. Okay, so you win by 2. All right. Um, there's no other modifiers, so you win by 2. So you do 2 wounds, but that's increased to 5 wounds because you get plus 3 for the double handed weapon. So that's 5 wounds on the black rat. Last action of the turn is my shrew is going to charge in against the squirrel. Uh, so I'm at plus two for charging, plus one, uh, sorry, no, plus two for charging, that's it. And um, my shrew is going to be a d6 on attack, I think. Um, yes, he is. Um, and I am going to, I'm going to throw a fate point in, just for the hell of it. D8, okay, so here we go. Oh, rubbish. Oh, not so good. Right, so I get two plus two is four. Charging. Four minus two. 
win by two, but you also lose two off your dice roll, so you're effectively a zero. So that's four wounds. I have five wounds because I've got a sword. So five wounds taken on the squirrel. Uh, is that enough to kill the squirrel? Yep. Oh, wow. <coughs> so the squirrel's down. And that ends the turn with another casualty for the clansman. Okay, so my shrew, last action of the game. We nearly forgot about him hiding there. Um, he's out of range of moving and throwing his knife at the uh, the mage. So he's going to charge into the cat and um, basically dish out some damage. So um, the cat is at minus one, but plus one for having the shield. Um, so that nullifies that. So he's on a d6. And I have just moved just over two inches. So as such, I'm at plus two for my charge. And I get four, takes me to six. Henry, what you got? And loads, because that becomes a 13. So uh, the shrew charges in and gets pushed aside by the cat shield, and that ends the turn. So uh, D8 roll off. Uh, Henry's lost three, I've lost one. So Henry loses one more, and we're going to be checking for routing. Uh, I only get a one, and so Henry gets to go first. So Henry, what are you going to do first? Um... Okay, so the otter's still not scared of the cat, even though the cat is sort of, what, they don't growl, do they? What do cats do? Meow. Meow. <laughs> okay, hiss, I think, do cats, yes. do they? Yeah? All right. Okay, so uh, both use the fake point to try and keep our characters, well, my character alive, and Henry wants to try and kill my leader. So I'm on D6s, and manager three, which is really quite poor. Oh, no, it's a 12! Oh no! So okay, let's uh, let's work this out. So um, it's a twelve plus seven becomes nineteen minus one. It's down to eighteen because I've got a shrew sort of biting at his heels. Uh, minus three, eighteen minus three takes him down to fifteen. Fifteen. Tough one. Uh, are you strong? I'm strong two. 15, so that puts it back up to 17. I'm not tough, so that's 17 points of damage. Which, <laughs> <laughs> single blow, takes out Bunty. <laughs> uh, so Bunty's down. And, uh, yeah, that's that's not good. Okay, <laughs> so he goes. And uh, that's, uh, that's that. And that's what happens when you roll that perfect roll. Lucky so-and-so. Right, um, back to the pirate go. Okay, so we're both using Fate. Um, Henry's now out of fate, I have one left. So both on d6, I'm at plus two, and you're at minus one. Because you've got a black rat there. Oh no! Uh, right, okay, so you've got five, I've got two. So my two becomes four for charging, um, and your five becomes four because you've got someone in. Um, so that is level, so that's no nothing at all. So that's the end of that, and it's your turn. Okay, so the terrier is going to try and uh, attack the black rat that's not activated yet. So it's um, I'm at d6, you're at d6 but minus one because you've got someone there. Uh, you're on d8, aren't you, on attack? So you're d8 minus one, I'm d6. Oh no, it's a one. Uh, oh, okay. So um, yeah, so you're on a one, I'm on a one. So no damage. So uh, survived it. So uh, a weak attack there. The dog's uh, getting a bit in trouble over there. So let's mark him as activated. Right, OK. Um, so I don't have to worry about the dog now. So I think I'm going to have a gamble with the shrew. And the shrew's going to try and damage the cat just for fun. <laughs> OK, so I'm um, D6. Your defence is D6, I presume? On the cat, what's your block? D6. D6 each. Okay. Ah, six! Ho 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 ho! The shrew! Uh, so six becomes 13. Okay. Um, 13, and you had three, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So 13 minus three is 10. However, i tell you what we didn't do. We didn't do the fearsome check. So I need to do that first, because I might have a minus three to that. Uh, so shrew fortitude, D8, against your presence. Wowzers. What's your presence? D8, wasn't it, on the cat? Yeah. So it's a D8 roll off. If you win it, I get minus three. Eight. Six. So I didn't. I wasn't affected by the cat. He's not a very scary cat. He's obviously got a little, like, little neck chain with a little bell on. Ding, ding, ding. 
I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a scary cat. Um, right, so back to where we were. So we're on 6 plus 7, 13, minus 3 takes it down to 10. Okay, so that's uh, plus 10. Uh, you do have plus 1 for your shield, so that becomes 9. So my shrew has just a 9 points of damage, minus your tough of 1. So that brings it down to 8 points of damage, which is two wound increments. Wow! Obviously too busy lording it over my dead otter and uh, he didn't realise the shrew with his little dagger stabbing him in the back. Now what are you going to do? Um. You've got the adder left. So you're going to fire into combat. So uh, the adders just moved down and tried to fire an elf bolt, lightning bolt, at the uh, black rat. Um, failed to uh, failed to do that, and um, on a three. So uh, it's just the black rat to go to end the turn. Oh no, uh, there's, well, there's two black rats still to go, isn't there? Right. Okay. So the first black rat is going to hit the uh, terrier. So d6 versus d6. Six versus one. Ooh. So that's 13. Uh, you're on one, minus one, because you've got someone next to you. So that's a zero. So that's 13 damage. Um, I think I'm unarmed, so I am. So that's minus two. So that's 11 wounds on the dog. So I'm unarmed. So you get minus two to your damage. Which will be two increments, I think, on the dog now. And then the last... And then the last action will be Pirate. He's going to come in as well and he's going to attack. And I'm going to use my fate, my last fate point to try and kill off the Terrier and force you to retreat. So 2d6, I'm at minus 1, your d6 minus 2. And then I'm plus 2 for charging. Uh, so 5 is my highest. Oh, <laughs> when the bad rolls come, they come. So, uh, five plus two for charging is seven. Minus one for my wound is six. Six, and then you are at minus one. So, effectively, that's eight damage. Plus one for my hand weapon, nine damage. So, that's the dog. The terrier has been ganged up on by a shrew and two rats and is dead. Or out of action. I shouldn't say dead, because... If it's a campaign, he's not dead. We have to roll. Right, okay, so that is the end of turn four. And as the Wildcats have lost more than half their force now, they have to do a roll-off and uh, see whether they stay in the game. So, unfortunately, with the roll-off failed, uh, the Wildcat leader and his uh, mage sneak off into the uh, into the background and the town is held by the pirates so uh, they actually uh, win that section and um, win the game now as an aside if we were playing a campaign we'd issue now experience points and you'd have to do upkeep and all the rest of it uh, but just for fun we're going to roll and see what happened to the the unfortunate casualties of this game uh, just to show you again how that sort of uh, plays out so uh, we'll do that now Okay, so the first casualty, um, not necessarily in any specific order, is the weasel. So, uh, Henry, if you want to roll a d20 and see what would have happened to him. 17. Oh, no. Horrific appearance. The warrior has suffered horrifying facial injuries, leaving them with a scar or brutal in appearance. However, that's a benefit because they now are fearsome. Okay, so again, not all injuries are bad. So that means, obviously, this guy... He is particularly ugly, and as such, obviously, he's going to be better a combatant going forward. The squirrel gets an 18, which is a full recovery. So, uh, yep, he's perfectly fine. The terrier gets a 9, which is blinded in one eye. So, the warrior survives but loses the sight in one eye. Reduce their range statistic by one level. So his range statistic would be a D4 now. It doesn't really affect him um, because of the fact that uh, he uh, 
has uh, got another eye and is an arm with a ranged weapon. However, if he rolls that again at any point, he effectively is dead because he won't be able to see anything. <laughs> and then uh, the hedgehog. See what happened to the poor hedgehog. 13. Uh, hand injury. So uh, Warrior's hand is badly injured and their strike stat is reduced by one level. So she's going to go from a D6 down to a D4, but would still have the killing blow skill later on. Uh, and then for the pirate forces. Okay, so let's see what happened to Winston. A 10. Uh, he's got a niggling wound. So the warrior suffers a recurring injury. At the start of every game, roll a D6. On the result of a 1, the character misses the game. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Bunty himself, who got absolutely set upon by the, the wildcat, um, gets an 8. He's got a chest wound. So this warrior's been badly wounded. And unfortunately for him, he's got delicate 1. So that's going to really hurt him going forward. Um, so, uh, but fortunately, as this was only a demo... Um, it doesn't matter, but just there we have it. Okay, so hopefully um, you've enjoyed that. And that is Burrows and Badgers. So uh, again, feel free to comment below if, um, and uh, do subscribe and check out the game. It is amazing. So there we have it. Thank you.